How you doing everybody? It's still uh, it's still Wednesday the 18th uh, of, of August 2010 and it's later on in the afternoon, much later on in the afternoon. I made that little video a few hours ago and uh, I might not have time to make one tomorrow so I, I want to do this while it's fresh in my mind. Uh, one of the commenters emailed me and uh, when he emailed me he attached a, um, a video from YouTube and I've put the video up so you can have a look at it and the video concerns a, a talking shop and uh, when I say that I mean it in the most complimentary sort of manner that I can say it, 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 it's a school it's a summer school and it takes place every year up in County Donegal up way up on the top of Ireland way up in uh, northwest Donegal very very beautiful very stark and very uh, n natural sort of landscape very barren and very rocky very beautiful looks out towards the North Atlantic a place called the Glen Tees all right up in Donegal and it's called the Patrick McGill Summer School and what it is is it's a as I say basically it's a talking shop for academics and for, for professionals who are the minor officer class of the Irish the Irish state and uh, Ireland as a whole really I'd say a small number of people who attend it would be involved in the private sector but I'd say the vast bulk of those who attend it and those who go to it would be in the full state and semi-state sector uh, mostly in the full state and that's uh, uh, teacher types and academics from academia from universities and that right and uh, it, it's probably a basically a, it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to escape from their families and their wives and go up there and have a bit of a chat and for wives to escape from their husbands a lot of women go up to it as well but I, I get the impression listening to them I've heard a few of them on before uh, they're academic heads and they're not really of this world because uh, those academics are something else or a breed apart but anyway uh, that's basically what it is. So what you have is you've got the minor officer class of the elemental, so the the the, 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 the yeah the, the, the minor people, the minions who took us to the precipice that we're at over the last 10, 15 years. They're all up there talking about the looking down into the abyss and talking about how we're going to get out of it and talking about literature and talking about all sorts of things. But a lot of things be do with education and with uh, the future of Ireland and about um, all a load of aspects of it, all the political aspects and all the economic aspects. Okay. Anyway, the video that Cyril sent me was to do with a man, one man, and uh, I've dealt with him at length on these videos before. And his name is Peter Sutherland. And the only reason why I keep going on about this man is uh, I, I saw the video and the the video was. <laughs> It was an extraordinary video. I'd I recommend you to look at it. Have a look at it. A four or five minute, six minute video. And it gives you an insight into this man. First of all, he must be one of the greatest actors. He must... Uh, he's up there with John, G John Gielgud and all those type. He really is. I tell you, he, if he ever had problems... In the, because he's not. He's a multi, multi, multi millionaire. He's one of the wealthiest men in Ireland. And on top of that, he's one of the most powerful men in the world. But if he ever had trouble in the business that he's had, he should take up acting. Because he definitely missed his vocation. He comes across up there like butter wouldn't melt in his mouth as a complete innocent abroad in the world. And uh, he can't understand how people, it's odious how people on the internet and on the, pre and, and, and on, on the alternative media attack people from the church and people out of politics and people out of the economic world the way they do. It's odious. He finds it odious in the extreme. So what stunned me was he's at this school and it's full of so-called academics but we all know they're all singing off the same hymn sheet you see the government pays their wages so they don't want to do anything to rock the state or rock the government. So the bottom line about it is anyway nobody challenged him and all I want to say is if I had been there not that I would want to be there I was in London trying to make a few pop I was in England trying to run around England trying to make some money for myself. Uh, but if I had been there, I would have asked them five simple questions. And they're sort of bang, bang, bang questions, all one after another. I would have asked them as following. I would have said, uh, Mr. Sutherland, would you prefer me to call you Sir Peter or just Peter Sutherland? 
because I know in England you have that title, you have the English title, and I just want to clarify that. That's number one. You know, Elizabeth Quilt gave you that for service to the British Empire, and I just want to clear that up. Okay, it's number one. I know you've been a great Irish man, a great uh, citizen of the Republic, as it were. Okay, I just want to clarify that. Next thing I wanted to raise with you is about your chairmanship of BP. Now, you were chairman of BP for quite a long period, and uh, you jump ship as it were uh, the, the first part of last year and I just want to check with you because I know I know it to be fact but I just want to check with you that you were actually chairman when the license for the greatest man-made disaster in the history of mankind happened in the Gulf of Mexico that you were the chairman of the company that got that license at that time okay just want to check that with you then the next thing I just wanted to check with you was, uh, I wanted to check with you, how the Bilderbergs are doing this year for their big meeting. Now, you probably wouldn't view it as being involved in a conspiracy, but the vast majority of people in the world who are not involved in the Bilderberg group would. Here's a grouping of people. They're not road sweepers. They don't clean out toilets or anything like that. No, no. This is from the good and the mighty and the super elite of the world. And you're on the steering committee of the organisation that gets them all together. Once a year. To meet in secret and make major decisions for the future of our world. Totally undemocratic. Totally unelected. Totally conspiratorial. And totally sinister by any, any average person reading between the lines and if it's not that why don't you hold the meetings in private or in, in the open why are they held in secret the fourth thing that I want to ask is about do you still hold down the chair of the investment arm of Goldman Sachs which is one of the most in sinister again pseudo terrorist financial organisations in the world and to back that claim up I was just looking on the internet the other day. The American government over the last 10 years have levied massive fines against that company. Massive fines against that company for being involved in serious shenanigans on Wall Street and on the investment world at large. And by that I mean hundreds of millions of dollars fined them. Nobody's gone to jail now, mind you. Of course, you know what the story is. Too big to fail, too big to go to jail. But then anyway, that's another day's work. And then the final thing I want to ask you is, how's the Vatican Bank doing? Because I know you head up the investment arm of it as well. I just wanted to check that, you know what I mean? So when you talk about people, when you talk about people who you find odious, challenging your political friends, and challenging your economic mates, and challenging your religious masters, I know, maybe the rest of the people at the McGill School, summer school don't know but I know what hymn sheet you're singing of you're one of Ireland's wealthiest men I don't know whether or not you pay your tax here in Ireland or whether or not you're a tax exile I don't particularly care but I know you have an English title and I know you've made your money your whole money in companies and corporations the behaviour of which is open to serious serious question and the final thing I want to say is uh, Mr Sutherland I understand you have been well and I wish you the very best personally I wish you the very best but the rest of it still stands <laughs>